talk about people going to someone and within three, three weeks to a year, everything can change for them. But let's talk about what three weeks to a year can do if you're not changing things for yourself and what the microbiome means to the world when it comes to chronic disease. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunsaker, joined by my co-host, Terry Ann Trevenin. Hey everyone. We have a very special guest today. Pedram Shojai has joined us and Pedram, thanks for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Nice to see you guys. It's awesome to have you. Terry Ann, do you want to go over Pedram's bio real quick? Absolutely. We're so excited to have Pedram here and he is a man with many titles. He is the founder of Well.org the New York Times bestselling author of The Urban Monk, Rise and Shine, and The Art of Stopping Time. He's the producer and director of the movies Vitality, Origins, and Prosperity. In his spare time, he's also a Taoist abbot, a doctor of oriental medicine, a kung fu world traveler, a fierce global green warrior, an avid backpacker, a devout alchemist, a Qigong master, and an old school Jedi biohacker working to preserve our natural world and wake us up to our full potential. Dude, where do we start? <laughs> I know. I want to start with the Jedi biohacker. Just the Jedi. <laughs> Just <go there. laughs> I love it. So, Pedram, I have a feeling I'm going to invite you back for several more shows if I can convince you because uh, just hearing your bio has me excited to, to hear about all so sorts many of stuff. Things. Um, but instead of going down too many different rabbit holes, tell us, what are you working on right now? What's your latest project? Yeah. I mean, in all candor, I'm working on a house. <laughs> I, uh, we just moved, I just moved my family to uh, Park City, Utah to be up in the mountains. Um, I'm going from sea level to 8550. So now I'm actually living higher than Machu Picchu and, um, man, it's just like a couple flights of stairs and I'm like, Oh yeah, we're in the mountains. Um, and so I'm, um, making a transition because we're doing a ton of film this year. I got four or five series and two films that um, we're, we're producing uh, and I'm adjusting my lifestyle. So I'm not out on the road as much because uh, you can't just talk about work-life balance. You got to live it. And I got young kids and um, you know, it's important to be with them. Um, and so, you know, I just finished a really powerful riveting project on the microbiome um, that really opened my eyes to just how interconnected we are with nature. Uh, and um, following that into a project on oral health, doing a movie with Robert Kiyosaki, doing a feature film called Biome on um, basically how integrating our health with the natural rhythms of the world can bring in. So we're gonna take a bunch of really sick people, make them better in the film, uh, and then a, a bunch more. So um, it's a loaded question because I can't stop. I just got so much so going on. So many things. Can I ask you a question before we even dive into some of the projects that, that you're working on and some of your focus right now? Um, tell me about you know this, this idea of natural health, alternative medicine. We talk a lot about this on the podcast. You're a big proponent for, you know, just so many things around the body and what we can do with our health. How did you get into this journey for yourself? How did you start down this path? Has this always been a part of your life or is this something that you came into at a certain point in your journey? Yeah, I was a pre-med at UCLA actually. And, um, had a very contrasted life, shall I say. Uh, I was interning at the pain medicine center and just watching people, miserable people get doped up on morphine and carted out. Uh, and, you know, the other side of it was I started taking Tai Chi classes out in the park, uh, you know, out in like the commons of UCLA and feeling this, this kind of weird thing between my palms going, what is that? And so, you know, one of these arcs was moving more towards kind of fatality and pessimism and really just it just didn't have any energy in it. And the other one was just full of life and blossoming. And I'm like, well, I mean, I only got one chance at this thing called life. Um, am I going to do something that is surrounding me with, you know, miserable people that I can't help? Or should I take a quantum leap and try to find something that, that can actually help people make me happy and help bring more vitality into the world? And, you know, it just kind of became obvious, you know, go, go the Jedi route. Yeah, that's beautiful. So from going to being in school at UCLA, what was your, I'm just curious, what was your next step after that? Like, what was the stepping stone into where you are now for you? I know that realization and kind of waking up, which a lot of people talk about in their health journey, but what was the next part of your adventure for you? Yeah, it was, it was a little clunky, right? Because when you do that, you know, I, 
immigrant family, get over here, become a doctor, make us proud, you know, rank number one in my high school, I'm at UCLA, and then I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do this, right? Um, that's, not, that's not easy for a young um, establishing ego, right? And so then I'm like, man, what, now what, right? And so I turned to God, frankly, I was like, hey, yo, if you're up there, I could sure use some help right now, um, you know, send me a clue. And, um, you know, this story I'm going to tell you doesn't normally happen is I was in uh, the university research library of UCLA, walking down the, an aisle as I'm having this kind of conversation in my head with God, and a book falls out of a bookshelf about 15 feet in front of me. And I'm like, come on. And I think someone's messing with me because obviously they must have heard my thoughts, right? And so I pick up the book. It's open to a story of a Taoist master carrying his disciples across this raging river by connecting his lower energy center. I'm like, what is this? And so since I had asked for a clue and a book fell, I, I had the wherewithal enough to be like, I should probably read this book. Read it that night, um, found a Taoist Kung Fu master, um, you know, 15 miles away the next day dragged a friend in with me because now I'm just like in weird woo -woo land and the teacher walked through this martial arts studio walked right past my friend straight up to me and goes I've been expecting you and wow. that became my kung fu master you know to this day and I got sucked into a lineage and became a monk and studied with the Dalai Lama and I mean it's just been a magical mystery tour ever since I mean just I have no idea I just untethered and had faith and trusted and here we are. That's awesome. You really are a Jedi. You really are. That's no joke. I wanted to be a Jedi as a kid. I, I thought that was fiction. And then I started reading books, realizing that it was all based on, you know, all these traditions that are alive and well. And yeah. So I decided to study them. Yeah. Now you're a Jedi of life and health. That's really, really cool. That's a fascinating story. And I appreciate you sharing that. I think so many people are going to hear that, you know, when we talk about journeys of health and things that we're going to talk about today, people oftentimes have this awakening, whether they're sick or whether they realize like, this isn't what I want to be doing. There's so much more to this. We, it's so black and white in this area, but there's so much more beyond that. Um, and your, your story is definitely a powerful story of, you know, you saw more beyond what you were doing um, when it came to life and health and beyond. You talk about energy and it's really just a fascinating story. Very, very cool. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. And then look, it's not all like, it's not all just like fun and games either. I mean, it's, it's tumultuous. It's like being in the white water. Sometimes you're saying we, and sometimes you think you're going to die. Right. Yeah. Is, is it's just like, you gotta, you know, not hang on because if you're rigid, you drown. And so you just got to let go and, and trust and learn and adapt. And then life just keeps bringing you cooler adventures. Right. And sometimes it's really hard. Right. And that's yeah. fine too. Beautiful. Beautiful. And this is why we're going to have you on a few more times because I, I want to dive into some of those, those deeper stories and just and learn more from you, quite frankly. I'd love to learn more personally from you. Um, but I'm going to go back to something you're talking about on one of your projects you're working on now and, and a buzzword that came up, which is microbiome. Um, we hear more and more of that. Can you kind of just share with our audience what is the microbiome and, and do it in um, as simple terms as possible so that everybody can really understand and get it and, and know what we're talking about today? Yep. So there's an ecosystem of life all around us. And, you know, that sounds kind of Jedi, but what the science has now shown is that we are much more intimately connected with all the life on the planet than we ever knew through the bacteria, vi viruses, protozoa, nematodes, even parasites that live inside our body. And so because we are able to understand uh, the genetics of um, these, uh, the, basically the RNA for the most part, there's RNA and DNA that we can now analyze on these bugs. We're realizing that a lot of the human function, the things that we thought we were responsible for, these uh, functions are actually attributed to these bacteria that are coexisting with us. The word is symbiosis. And so all of this life in and around us is part of what makes us human. And without it, we collapse and we fall ill. And so I went and went to all the top universities from Harvard to Caltech, um, basically traveled the country for well over a year, really digging into the science of this, being like, okay, what is this and what are the implications? And man, it is unbelievable. Like all these autoimmune conditions, all these chronic conditions that we're hearing about are all touched by the microbiome. And so if you don't have proper gut health and you're not supporting the life inside of you, there are entire systems that are collapsing that are leading to inflammation and chronic disease. And we've just been looking through the wrong lens. I mean, it's just been a 
fascinating journey. Can I ask you a question about that too? Because I think that some people still struggle with the term, like you talk about microbiome and you talk about gut health and we, a lot of people talk about leaky gut. And I think this is still something that people are still trying to accept and bring into more modern mainstream medicine. What would you say to people that are like, is that really a thing? Is leaky gut really a thing? Like what would be your argument for that to people who are still trying to figure this out for themselves and they're questioning like, is this really something that's impacting my health? So the challenge with the people who are questioning that is they're seeing doctors who are absolutely out of date in their information and are basically um, just stooges for the pharmaceutical companies. All the good doctors, anyone who's worth their salt in the medical industry now understands that this is the future of all medicine. There are entire uh, departments of the universities that I've been at that were, went from immunology to studying the microbiome. And I'm talking Harvard, I'm talking Caltech, I'm talking the top, you know, Johns Hopkins, the smartest people out there are going bananas over what's happening here. And so the doctors who don't understand this are like, bah, those guys are just waiting to retire and, and can't wait till you get out of the office because they got golf coming up, right? Yeah. And so you got to be careful where you, where you get your information because there's some dinosaurs out there that don't really care about your health and consider being a doctor a job job. Yeah. Well, it goes back to what you said about being open to what's out there, being open to receiving information that's out there. And it is something that people are still latching on to, but it's so critical to our health. Absolutely. So 17 years is the average time it takes for a new medical discovery to actually get to the, your main street doctor's office for them to be implementing it in their care. Right. And so after I left UCLA, I went and became a doctor of oriental medicine. Then I started a medical group and had multiple doctors working for me. And this is after the monk days. And I realized that the, the incentive system was completely upside down in the Western medical model because you diagnose and you treat with pharmacological agents and there was really no incentive to get people better, right? And so the business of medicine is all the money's in procedures, the money is in chronic disease and people coming back and, and just having higher escalation of claims. And I, and I talked to the, the smartest people that are trying to fix the insurance company problems understand that as you drive costs up, there's more money to be made. They are not factoring in the human suffering. They are not factoring in the fact that this does not work and it's broken. So when they're talking about fixing healthcare and they're having like a healthcare debate, they're having a healthcare finance debate. You want to have a healthcare debate? Let's talk about vegetables, right? Let's talk about stress. Let's talk about supplements. Let's talk about the microbiome. I don't care, you know, who pays the exorbitant bills isn't what's going to fix healthcare. What we do with our bodies and how we act in our day-to-day -day lifestyles, that's how you fix healthcare. Yeah, we can be done right there today. Done. <laughs> like you just said the nail on the head. Seriously, it's so it's so true though. It's so driven by money. And, and the financial side of things. And I love that you just said that because it does go back to what we're putting in our body. Hands down, that's one of the most critical things. So um, speaking of what we put in our body and going back to the microbiome, why is it so important? You know, talk about what that does for us. Let's talk a little bit further and dive a little deeper into what it does. You talk about the ecosystem, the ecosystem of our body and the microbiome and what people should really understand about it. So if, if we were to kind of, go back to the origins of this um and, and the origins are actually like kind of prenatal medicine for mom getting mom ready to have a kid but let's go a little further in the timeline and just talk about a baby being born 30 percent of mom's breast milk these oligosaccharides that are secreted by mom are indigestible by baby they are specifically designed to feed the bacteria in the baby's gut that, that mom needs to, to have, um, like not, not just supported, but thrive so that baby can be healthy. And so if you look at our evolutionary cycle and how we've grown to coexist with these bacteria, we, from the birth canal coming through, that's our first inoculation of, of you know, what's out there and what bacteria are out there. That bacteria becomes our seed colony that mom's breast milk then feeds. And mom starts secreting different types of bacteria into her vaginal canal at the end of like say, say month eight or so in the third trimester. So that baby gets these bacteria coming through the vaginal canal, then is fed through these uh, oligosaccharides in mom's breast milk so that baby can have the bacteria it needs to thrive. 
Now, fast forward here, you need to eat the fiber, the vegetables, the phytonutrients, and all these things that these bacteria eat, not for you, but for the bacteria. And then these bacteria create, in the, in the kind of postbiotic state, the metabolome, then they start giving us energy, they start giving us amino acids, they start giving us all these other uh, enzymes and cofactors that come through um, them after we feed them. And so if we put them first and, and understand how to feed them, they take care of us. And in turn, we get less illness, less chronic disease, we have more energy, things work, right? And so we have just been so backwards about it because we had a, a false read on what bacteria are and what sterility really means. Now we're finding that every tissue, every organ in the body has bacteria associated with it. And so it's like there's breast tissue, that healthy breast tissue has certain bacteria around it. And if you find cancerous breast tissue, there's other bacteria that have created an environment that now allows for cancer to appear. It has blown the doors open on everything wow. we know about medicine. And this is just the beginning. I mean, it is so exciting to be in the science of all this right now. So what stuff, what are people eating? What lifestyles are they doing that's destroying their microbiome or that's feeding the wrong bacteria? Are, are there things that they should eliminate from their diet and things they should add more to for their diet? Absolutely. I mean, so broad strokes here because we're now crossing into this era of individualized personalized medicine where the answer for me isn't necessarily the answer for you, right? And so for me, I did a, a analysis of my microbiome and she just looks at it and she's like, dude, you're eating too much meat. I'm like, what? And she's like, you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid and the meat is um, putrefying in your guts. And there's certain bacteria that only exist in putrefied meat that we're getting small traces of. I mean, it's not terrible, but you got to fix this. Got it. Right. And so, so what does that mean for my overall health is those bacteria were then putting out exudate. They, they were putting out substances that were leading to inflammation. I cut back on my meat a little bit and adjusted for that. And my arthritic hip started feeling better, right? And so you look at how we need to eat and who we need to feed, you start taking indigestible fiber, you start taking inulin, you start taking prebiotics, and you start taking probiotics like ferments, right? Like as I'm sitting here, I'm sipping on kombucha, right? You take fermented foods and prebiotic foods with every single meal and you adjust for feeding the bacteria that help you thrive and bringing down the bacteria specifically like the yeast and the bad bacteria that thrive on sugars in particular, um, you'll start to notice a difference very quickly. Um, and you know, some, some people within a week have hallelujah moments. Some people takes longer, just depends on how, you know, people are like, everyone's so used to like, you know, six pack abs in eight minutes that they, they miss the fact that they've burned 55 years eating and, and living one way. And then after three days of a diet, they're like, it didn't work. Right. And so for some people it takes a, a bit longer, right. But it works. And I've seen it time and again, we've interviewed thousands of patients coming out of all these top institutions, people who had, you know, blood in their stool and, 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 you know, just, just nasty, terrible things in their digestion fixing their diet, adjusting their micro microbiome, their brain fog went away, their anxiety, depression went away, the energy levels came back, they dropped 40 pounds. I mean, it just goes on. And I've interviewed so many of these people. Did it happen overnight? No. But did it happen in, you know, three months, six months? Yes. Right. And so six months from now, you have a completely new body, you are a completely new human being, and you lose the narrative of everything sucking and, and, and your life being miserable because your body isn't cooperating with you. Uh, is that worth a dietary change? You tell me, right? Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit, and, and just kind of going off of what you just said about people's life changing and it takes time, talk a little bit about the microbiome and our immune system, because you talked about the bacteria being in all of this different tissue. and you know, breast cancer has a different type of bacteria than healthy tissue does. Talk about the microbiome and the immune system. Everything I'm reading, it's so critical to our immune system. And, and talk a little bit about the research behind that and what we're seeing there in long-term health, people being healthy over long periods of time and that link to our immune system, how critical that is. So 70% or so of our immune system is around our guts. It's called the gut associated lymphatic tissue. And so what happens is what we didn't understand before that's become abundantly clear now 
is that the healthy bacteria, the colonies of bacteria that are secreting biofilm and kind of creating, you know, neighborhoods for themselves. And they change seasonally, they change over time, they change with altitude, they change, like everything changes, right? Is they are acting as the sentinels between the outside world and the inside world and telling the immune system that everything is cool, right? Uh, what happens typically in uh, the standard American diet is we will have really inflammatory foods. We will have foods that will tear our gut lining. The like gluten tears the gut lining. Most people have issues with dairy. Most people will have you know, processed foods. And what happens is once you start creating inflammation and tears in the lining of the gut, there are food particles that will sneak through and the immune system says, hey, you're not supposed to be on this side. Uh, it will start to create antibodies to those food particles as foreign invaders. Now you're allergic to turkey. Now you're allergic to broccoli. Whatever it was that you were eating, you're starting to develop allergies to. And the most common ones are wheat and dairy, right? Uh, and then the immune system starts to become hypermobilized because the wall has been breached. Now, well before that wall's breached, there's a breach in the microbiome and the colonies that are there to support. So if you let your microbiome colonies collapse and you let the bad guys uh, grow and harbor, you know, more bad guy colonies, what they, you know, for lack of a better uh, way to describe it, what they poop out is toxic to your intestinal lining and it will start to break that wall. Next time you have dairy, next time you have a milkshake, that is now setting off your immune system. And so most people are having all these immune issues not because their immune system is weak, it's because their immune system is fighting a, a raging battle on multiple fronts because there's a tear on the inside. It's kind of like saying, you know, there's no, there's no money for books and schools and roads because we've been at war for 10 years, right? And so you can't heal if your immune system is constantly battling and that all starts in the gut and that all has to do with how the microbiome is informing the immune system to either attack or to relax and it will do so based on what is in there if it senses danger your body is at war right and so it i mean it's really like it, it's a lot more complicated than that uh but for lack of a uh, you know for 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 clarity's sake let's just say when you have an inflammatory cascade that sets off your immune system, there's a very good chance your microbiome colonies have been compromised and you need to readjust what bacteria you are harboring and they will then help bring down that inflammation. They will help control that wall and then your body can heal. And once your body's healed, you'll find that all those kind of immune um, issues that you're having will start to come down. And, and any, any functional medicine doctor that knows what they're doing can fix that in three weeks to, to you know, a year, depending on how, how severe the case is. So you talk about the microbiome, you're talking about bacteria. <clears throat> what role do parasites play in all of this? Because I'm, I've been doing some research and I was looking to start a parasite cleanse, thinking, all right, you got to get the parasites out. At the same time, it, it's, like, uh, it's like taking an antibiotic, right? I don't necessarily want to take an antibiotic and just kill all the bacteria um, that's in my body or I'm destroying the microbiome. How do parasites play a role and, and what's your take on that? So the short answer to that would be we're just starting to figure that out. Um, we're finding that there's certain parasites that help bring down your blood sugar. There's certain parasites that will help you offset certain disease processes. And so it's like, oh my goodness, some of these parasites even belong in the right quantities. And so, you know, we live in a world where, you know, Lucifer was ejected from heaven and now everything is black and white, right? So either, you know, it's, it's good or it's evil. You know, it's, if it's a parasite, we got to nuke it. And now we're like, oh man, it's way more layered than that. Some of these parasites are our friends. Some of them aren't, right? Very specifically. Some of them are really bad and you got to get rid of them. Other ones were like, wow, in a certain proportion, these parasites are actually part of a functioning ecosystem that makes the body thrive. And so we're just starting to figure this out. But, you know, all of this kind of like all or nothing mentality has been really uh, challenged now by the science and, you know, everyone's having to open their eyes and open their minds, you know, from the hard science all the way to kind of like the hippy dippy practitioners who are doing, you know, just brand, like parasite cleanses on everybody, right? And so somewhere in the middle is reality. And we're starting to, you know, like have an open-minded scientific approach to just figuring out what's up. And it's going to be different for Jonathan than it is for Pedro. Right. Absolutely. Now, I mean, are you finding that mainly it's just adjusting diet? 
and we'll, you'll ultimately feed the good bacteria. <clears throat> Likely we'll find out that we're feeding the good parasites and eliminating the bad stuff ultimately makes that transition. Is it imperative to have the prebiotics and probiotics and you know, the, the sauerkraut and, and the kombucha and the things like that to get the good bacteria in? Or can you simply shift it just by shifting diet and feeding the good ones and, and the bad ones dying off? Unclear is, is what I'll have to say to that because, you know, we are learning a lot about a lot. Let, let's just go back to, you know, this, this thing called the refrigerator. Before we understood how to refrigerate food, the way we preserved it is we fermented it. Right. And so for hundreds of thousands of years, we have developed in some sort of synergistic relationship with certain bacteria through our ferments that now are missing by our physiology. So to a certain extent, I would say, and I, I, would, I recommend this to my patients, is just eat a lot of ferments, a lot of different kinds of ferments, and have a lot of variety of ferments because we just aren't having that anymore. Like in the old days, I'd walk out to the creek out here, stick my head in the water and just drink it, you know, dirt, bacteria and all, because that was just part of what came into my body. Now it's like, oh my God, I can't do that. It's so dirty, I'm gonna die, right? And so we are a very different species. In the last three generations from adding all the petrochemicals and the toxins and the plastics and, you know, that whole story uh, to, uh, you know, isolating ourselves from that natural environment and not getting the same kind of bacteria, uh, you know, and also just the, the nutrients coming from the healthier soil and all these things is we have shifted so dramatically that I say, absolutely, you got to change your diet and do it. Absolutely eat ferments. But I also recommend supplements and phytonutrients and probiotics and all sorts of, you know, extra fiber to people now, just because the diet, the food system and the supply chain has changed so much that we need all the help we can get. Like, it sounds great to go live like on Little House on the Prairie. It's just the world is very different. And you're still getting toxins from China ra raining down on you wherever you think you're hiding, right? And so you just, we have to, we're, we're in a different world now. We have to change in accordance to that. Absolutely. So let's talk about, go back to the immune system for a minute. We talk about that inflammatory response. Let's talk a little bit about the microbiome and chronic disease because it starts with our immune system being compromised. It starts with inflammation. Talk a little bit about that. And, and if people aren't taking care of their body, you talk about people going to someone and within three, three weeks to a year, everything can change for them. But let's talk about what three weeks to a year can do if you're not changing things for yourself and what the microbiome means to the world when it comes to chronic disease. Man, just give me six good hours in Vegas and I could change a lot overnight, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's really easy to take a turn south and, and really kind of wake up sick and compromised, right? Yeah. And so you could live really well six days out of the week and go binge on something and never get healthy. And so I think that there is also this kind of feast or famine mentality with health that we need to look at because there is no Hail Mary, right? It's like now people are like, you know, getting stem cells and all sorts of things trying to kind of make up for like life's, life's past mistakes type of thing. And, you know, there's just no substitute really for good, clean, healthy living all the time. Does that mean never have a glass of wine? No, of course not, right? But, you know, you can go south way faster then you can heal and recover from it, right? So, you know, you know, with wisdom and age, you start to learn that it just ain't worth it, right? And so you just start kind of acting more responsibly towards your body. That said, I mean, look, your, your cells in your stomach every couple of days are brand new, right? Your skin is shedding, get new skin every few days. Like every seven years, your entire body is brand new, right? And so what remains fixed is your operating system and your habits, and the way mom used to cook, and the way you cook because of the way mom used to cook, or the way mom never cooked. So now all you do is order Chinese, right? And so all of these habits that, that have created this kind of human um, progression, the system of this progression of this, this dream that is you, you know, unless you can change the thought form, unless you could change the habits of the human. There is no miracle pill. There is no Hail Mary. There's no like doctor that you haven't met yet that's going to have all the solutions. You know, we're all trying to, you know, we're kind of falling into this weird 
Um, you know, it's like the Godfather whacking people all week and going and begging for forgiveness from the Pope and just being absolved, right? That's not how medicine is supposed to be. You're supposed to have good, clean, healthy living. And then when things go south, your doctor works with you to adjust it a little bit. That's not where the money's being made. That's not how the healthcare system is, is oriented. And I think that's why we are in the mess that we're in is because it's become a transactional third party system where somehow the doctor is supposed to fix you. You got to fix you, man. That's it. You know, I'm sorry. I don't have a popular message there, but if you don't do the work. I love that though. That's the truth of the matter right there. Though it's not the popular message, but I mean, that's the truth. You have to work on your own body first and foremost. No one's going to fix it for you. Yeah. Well, every, everybody wants the magic pill. Everybody wants the one size fits all. Like tell me the one diet that's, you know, the, 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 the one true diet, right. That's going to fix me and be right. And everybody's different, right. Completely different. I thought the magic word was keto this week. Yeah, right? it is. <laughs> right? It's like the, the, the every single um, diet that comes to pass is just another fad. And people are just waiting to be told what's next instead of waking up to what their body's telling them and how to, how to you know, it's like, oh, God, how did I feel after I ate that carrot, right? Versus, oh, they said eat carrots. And, and so there is a complete revolution happening in how you are to look at your own health, your own trajectory in health. And like my kids have very different palates. And if I try to feed them the same thing, I'm a moron, right? I've learned that, you know, my daughter has very different kind of, you know, taste buds and she actually harbors slightly different bacteria than my son and we've tested it. And so it's like, you know, we feed them slightly differently based on what helps them thrive, right? That's where everything is going. Not sit down and finish your damn plate or you can't get up or you don't get dessert. Like it's just, we're, we're coming from a sleepwalking generation, right? And we are now waking up to this and we have to wake up to all these bad habits that we you know, inherited from our folks. Yeah. So you just talked about getting, getting the bacteria tested in, yep. in your two kids, which is something I want to do. Where, how are you doing that? Are you just getting that with your naturopath or uh, do you oh, have I, mean, I, I order because I, I still, you know, keep myself kind of in medicine a little bit. But so, but like there's a consumer test called Biome that I like a lot. I've done a lot of work with them. They do RNA testing. It's just a couple hundred bucks. You just swab a little poop and send it in the mail and you get all sorts of really good data back. And so, and I've also done like doctor's data. I've done a bunch of them uh, just because I have all these friends in functional medicine. Some, some of them you have to do in clinic. Viome's just B to C. You could just, you know, go on viome.com and get it, right? And um, you get a lot of data from these tests and you could glean a lot. Like for me, I would force feed myself these dumb kale salads because kale was allegedly good for me, you know, keto, keto, right? And so it's like, you hear all these, these words like keto and kale, you're like, oh man, I should eat more kale. Uh, it turns out I don't have the bacteria that break down the oxalates in kale. And so I would eat a kale salad and feel bloated and tired and be like, dude, you know, being healthy sucks, right? <laughs> Yeah. I just didn't love it. And then I started kind of helping support those a little bit. Now I could eat more kale because I have the bacteria that break down the oxalates. But until I knew that, I was just feeling like a loser because I was eating salads and not feeling what the book said I should have felt, right? Yeah. It's not for me. No, and I think that's such an important concept. We have hit on this so many times on our podcast that your body is unique and it's different for everyone. And just asking people to go and figure out what works for them, get tested for different things. You literally just gave an example in what we talk about all the time on a very detailed level, like kale does not work for me. Everybody says eat kale, eat kale, eat kale, eat kale. It doesn't work for you. And so sometimes people are going and doing these healthy, healthy protocols and they're like, but I don't feel better or I'm not feeling well. Well, maybe that's not what you need. You know, it's, it's just fascinating that we have all of this you know, accessibility to these tests and things that can tell us what we need and we're not utilizing them. We could feel so good. We could feel at our very best just in things like kale doesn't work for me, which I think is super interesting. I would have never thought that you could be tested and realize that kale is not something that works for your body at that level down to bacteria. Um, and I think that's going to be super fascinating for people listening today, even down to that level in our body. When we talk about our body being an ecosystem, it goes so deep. The layers are so deep. We're just peeling back the layers of the microbiome, like you were talking about. Super interesting. It's been great. I mean, look, I come, you know, I, I studied with the Dalai Lama. I've studied with a lot of very special human beings in my life. And I can tell you right now, if, the Dal if you were to ask the Dalai Lama, he would tell you, you to Buddha right? He's, it's not like, oh, look at me. I'm the Dalai Lama. Kiss the ring. Do what I say. It's just like, look, 
you need to awaken to the innate wisdom inside your own body and figure out what's best for you. And the problem is we live in a society where everyone is waiting for the, the next kind of guru to tell them what to do, right? Health, personal development, uh, politics, everything. Everyone's just kind of tell, tell me how to vote, tell me what to do. And it's just like no one's thinking for themselves. And that is an epidemic that's led to our healthcare crisis, has led to our obesity crisis, led to a lot of things, right? Led, led to people, you know, suicide rates going up. It's like no one even thinks for themselves anymore, right? Yeah. And so these are the things we need to change. And, the, and here's the good news. There's a silver lining here, is when you start eating a little better, you start nurturing your microbiome, anxiety and depression start to fade, brain fog starts to fade, you start feeling better, You're, you have more agency, you have more blood flow to your prefrontal cortex, you can say no to the cheesecake easier. Every, every good decision leads to better decisions and eventually the fog lifts and you're thinking clearly and you're like, you know what, why don't we go for a walk instead, right? And, and these kind of upward spiral decisions happen starting with the next meal that's in front of you. And if you blow that meal, you got another opportunity in the next meal and just keep making good decisions until that becomes the habit, right? It doesn't, you don't have to do it all at once. Everyone's like, oh, well, you know, I'm 43 years old. Now I got to do a, a month long fast and like, you know, put, put colonics in my body and, you know, scrape my eyeball or whatever the hell else people are doing right now to like feel like they're absolving themselves of life's sins instead of just like eating an extra vegetable with lunch today and starting there, right? And so it's like, it's this all or nothing thing instead of just being like, all right, how do I start making slightly better decisions and letting those inform my next decision? Yeah. Well, not to, I mean, we're, and not to mention, we're, we're more connected now than we've ever been with the internet and with information, yet a lot of people choose to spend that time on Facebook and Instagram and following what everybody else is doing rather than edu, I mean, there's tons of free information out there to learn about all of these subjects we're talking about. That's why we do a podcast. I mean, there's so many podcasts out there that you can listen and learn and, and just up your game in, in so many ways um, that it's, it, it is a shame that there's a lot of people that are just waiting to be told what to do. I think we're waking up. I think we're transitioning beyond that point. Um, at least I hope we are. So, and, and I know that you're really big on educating people and giving a lot of information. Let's talk about your docu-series that you have coming up. And it, it's all specifically about the microbiome, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's called Interconnected. And um, it has become just this obsession in my life because, you know, what became something that, you know, I was reading up on all this all, I've, I've just been nerding out on this microbiome thing for a long time because, I mean, really, it's kind of, it's kind of Yoda-like, right? Like the forces all around you and life around you, you know, is all connected. I'm like, wow, let's, the research is starting to say that, right? And the more I started reading it, the more it started making sense. And now, you know, I've got the guys at Caltech and MIT and Harvard on speed dial. And, and these guys are just feeding me research being like, check this out. Right. And it's just gotten to the point where I'm like, man, I need to, it got to the point like a year ago where I was like, man, I need to like do this. I need to actually make a series about this. And so we spent well over a year going to all the top doctors, functional medicine doctors and research institutions, just downloading the story. Um, and we've shared it, you know, we shared it with a few thousand people and just blew their minds. It was really, it's, it was like a life changing uh, experience for people who finally connected the dots and were like, Oh my goodness, I'm going to start eating right starting right now. And now I understand why. Right. And it, and it really kind of brought it home. Um, because once you understand what life is and how life thrives in and around your body, you then, you know, it's like, I'm kind of taking this, this, concept of pro-life back, right? Let's just, let's not talk about abortion. Let's just talk about pro-life, right? When you start eating pro-life, when you start doing it in a way where you are supporting the friends that support your health, everything gets better. I mean, I've seen people that were bedridden that couldn't leave the house because they would like crap themselves and like had really, really bad illness, right? just robust, smiling, vibrant, full of life because they finally understood why, why they needed to change a couple of the habits and behaviors and just a couple unlocks really. And so the series, I mean, it's nine part series really gets into it from autoimmunity to thyroid to obesity. To, you know, we really did a deep dive. Um, and um, I thought, you know, I was scared it would go over people's heads they loved it. They gobbled it up. So we've actually made it uh, available 
Uh, basically, I'm, I'm probably going to license it to medical students after this um, because there's so much interest by these organizations, but we're going to share it with the world for free uh, for a, a live screening uh, coming up soon. And it's just something that's just kind of part of my charter, which is share this stuff as much as you can, get it out there so people understand. Because when people understand, that's when they make good decisions, right? I could go to a doctor, he could say something that sounds really inconvenient and be like, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm going to go to the next doctor until someone tells me something I want to hear. But when I understand it, now I'm driving and I'm responsible. Awesome. And so it's a nine part docu-series and it's absolutely free for anybody to watch, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do a nine day free screening event. I mean, these things cost, it cost me, you know, million, million dollars and change to produce. Uh, but part of our charter is to make it free for those nine days and share it with the world. And then we have, you know, we have programs and companion guides and things that people can purchase from us if they, if they enjoy it and want to support our work. Um, but part of our thing is just help people as much as they can. And, and so it always comes around. Like we end up, you know, this is my fifth movie slash series and, and we've helped millions of people with what we do. It's just, it's a wonderful benevolent model where you could help a lot of people and then the people who want more help, you know, kind of seek it out through you and it just works out really well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm such a big believer in this process and doing it the way that you're doing it with the docu-series. Um, clearly we've done some docu-series in the past and there's, there's just something to be said for changing up the way that we do things. It's not a, a, you know, give me your money and I'll give you the solution. It's, you know what, let me just give you all the solutions. Let me give you all the answers. Let me give you everything that I've created for free. And if you like what we're doing and you want us to continue doing it, then support us, right? right. And, and it's just a different model. And I think that um, whether you believe in karma or not, or energy or whatever's happening, you know, uh, in the world and all this being connected, I feel like doing it that way just, um, just leaves a lot of rewards to come back to you. And I just, I don't know, it's just a, a much better process in my opinion. And so I love that you're doing it. I love that you're sharing it with the world for free. The URL for those that are listening is interconnectedseries.com. Um, we'll have a link on empoweringyou.com website as well. Um, but definitely go and register to watch it for free. I cannot wait for it to watch. I'll be tuning in every night to, to watch and learn from you, Pedro. Terry, do you have anything more you want to? I want to ask one last question. I've been asking people this on the podcast. And before I ask you, I love what you said earlier. I'm going to take this away um, from this podcast today. Wake up to, to the wisdom within yourself when it comes to your health. I love that so much. If there's one thing you could say to the world, your message, your mission, one last thing that you could say, what would you say to people about their health? It's your health, right? And it's your responsibility. So if you're looking outside of yourself for answers, you could do that for information, but every thousand mile journey starts with the first step and you are the one that has to take that step. If you're looking for someone to fix you, you have flipped your orientation and you're never going to heal. Once you step in and understand that the healer comes from within and there's plenty of doctors and, and resources and information and books and supplement, all that stuff is out there, right? But you have to commit to your healing. And once you decide that you are going to heal and nothing's going to get in the way of that, that's when the healing starts. Love that. So powerful. Thank you so much, Padram. I appreciate this conversation today. I've learned so much and I cannot wait for your series. Absolutely. Everybody go to interconnectedseries.com. Um, you can also go to empoweringyouorganically.com. We will have the transcripts. We will have the show notes. You can watch the video of this if you're listening to us uh, through iTunes. There will be links to Pedram's site and other projects that he's working on. You can learn more about him, well.org, everything else, the, the 50 million things he has going on. We'll link to all of it um, at empoweringyouorganically.com. Pedram, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I'm going to reach out after we're, we're done recording here and see if we can book you for some future ones because I think you have a wealth of knowledge that um, the world needs to hear and, and we love to be a part of getting that information out. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, thank Pat. you. This has been great. Thank you so much, both of you.